Hi everyone, I'm taking a five minute break from um, grant writing. Just uh, thought it might be fun to talk a little bit about One Health. Um, what is One Health? What it is that I'm trying to accomplish? So basically One Health is if your environment and your wildlife is healthy, then humans are also healthy. We're all connected. We're not uh, living isolated from one another. And um, too often in, in today's world, humans have tried to create an environment that doesn't have wildlife in it. Um, we appreciate the birds, of course, and birds are, are able to, to navigate some of our urban environments. Uh, and then we have the urban animals, you know, raccoons and possums and things like that. But for the most part, we have tried to have the forest and the swamps and everything be over over there. Um, and us living somewhere in our spot. But the truth is we all need to learn how to live together um, and how we need to get wildlife at space and let them do their, their thing where we create this healthy habitat where they can thrive and then we can also thrive. And so beavers are a great example of that. Um, if we can learn to live side by side with beavers, uh, they do a remarkable job taking care of our environment for us. Uh, we just have to give them their space and, um, and learn to live side by side. Um, and then my primary focus with my current job is marine mammals, uh, dolphins, for example. Um, looking at dolphins as sentinels for human health. If the dolphins out in the Mississippi Sound in the Gulf of Mexico are not doing well, um, we are looking at the water quality and is there something that's happening um, that what humans are doing by dumping pathogens and pollutants into to the water, we're not doing the dolphins any favors, and we're also, of course, not doing ourselves any favors. So it's a, it's a daunting task. It's a little bit overwhelming, but um, it's something that uh, I never shirk away from a challenge. So here I am looking at marine mammals and beavers. <laughs> so um, right now what, what I'm going to do uh, after after this little talk is uh, show you a couple of videos. One is my recent trip to Peru where I'm working with some incredible Peruvian colleagues and we are studying marine mammals uh, there in the coast um, of southern Peru. And it's a it's an area that has not received a lot of study. Um, it's an area that is heavily utilized by local fishermen, and so uh, it's just getting started. Um, you know, step one is just identifying the important um, you know species that live there, and then step two is uh, making sure that the humans and the wildlife are you know living in harmony. And and if there's anything that can can be done to make sure that it's sustainable long-term between the fisheries, uh, the, the seaweed extractions and things like that. Um, uh, it, incredible, it's absolutely incredible. So just enjoy a quick clip of, of what we experienced there and the future uh, is super exciting. I cannot wait to go back. We're working on student programs, we're working on research programs, uh, it's remarkable. And then the other video is a trip I did to uh, Coral World in the U.S. Virgin Islands, St. Thomas. And um, they have a dolphin sanctuary out there for dolphins who live in human care. And this can be controversial. I get that. Uh, some people, you know, they absolutely should not be, um, you know, in captivity. I understand. Um, but as a researcher, I greatly appreciate having access to these trained animals to be able to gather baseline data that's ultimately going to benefit wild dolphins. So if I am working with any uh, captive marine mammal facility, uh, you can rest assured that we share the same values as far as animal welfare and care. Um, and that uh, they pride themselves in providing access to researchers. And this is not something that uh, every place does. Not all places are created equal. Um, so uh, right now I've partnered with two different facilities. One is Coral World in the U.S. Virgin Islands, and the other is Theater of the Sea in the Florida Keys. And both of these places are giving me access to marine mammals where I can do very specific studies um, looking at um, skin health, looking at... Um, how we can better analyze the populations here in the wild. So I'm flying drones. I am doing this really cool uh, contactless ultrasound where I can measure blubber thickness. Um, and I'm also doing skin microbiomes. And uh, these are things that you just, you just cannot do uh, out there in the field. But these are things that I can utilize these animals for, bring it to the field, and ultimately it's going to, uh, going to help. 
And so um, I'm very proud of these these places that are giving us access and allowing us, you know, the opportunity to work with these animals. And um, I, I hope for a world where, you know, we greatly continue to improve um, our understanding of marine mammals by using these places and being able to apply it out in the field. So hopefully you enjoy this little video. I'm happy to take any questions. Today I am at the beautiful Coral World Dolphin Sanctuary in the U.S. Virgin Islands on St. Thomas. And I'm out here doing some really, really um, amazing and cool research with their 
population of dolphins and sea lions, as well as some uh, coral work as well. Um, a lot of this work has to do with my One Health project that I am building, and uh, we are collecting some really, really interesting data on dolphins, including microbiomes and also some uh, really cool new ultrasound technology and drone flights. So I can't wait to uh, share it with everyone, but it is absolutely gorgeous day at this beautiful place. Lungs? You look at lungs? There it is. 